Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline, and today we are hitting the road to go to Goodwill. This is the small Goodwill in Mount Joy, Pennsylvania. And if you're new to my channel, I am a full-time eBay reseller who goes to yard sales, thrift stores, estate sales, auction houses, anywhere where I can buy in low to be able to resell for high. That's what we're talking. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get on the road. Let's see what we can find today to flip for a profit. Okay, so I figured I would start this thrift with me with the perspective photos of what the new and upcoming Goodwill is going to look like. This is like 10 minutes from my house. I am super excited. This is coming early 2022, fingers crossed. So right now what we're visiting today is the pop-up store. Goodwill put this in a location, again, near me until the new building is built. They knocked down the old one. That's how old it was. But I just figured I would share this with you guys because you know I'm all about shopping at Goodwill and trying to find things to flip for a profit. And the first thing in the door is a pair of Air Max waiting for me. These are women's Air Max with the gel sole, I believe it's called. Now in looking at them, I did notice there was a stain on one of the toes and the laces were broke, but I still put them in my cart to be able to check the inner tag and see what they could bring as far as price wise. I was willing to replace the laces and I was pretty confident I could get the stain out, but let's keep going and see what I find. Here I'm just taking a little peek at a floral skirt and we are on to the glass aisle. This Goodwill is kind of on the small side, but once in a while I find some really great items here. They are up-priced though, as most of the Goodwills are now. So I am looking at glassware and this set of glasses is puzzling me. We have a blue, a green, and two pink. I think if it would have been four different colors, I might have taken them, but I do spot, I'm gonna call this a peacock feather martini glass. And I did quickly see if I could find a second one, which I could not. I did want to find a second one. So I think I wind up going back and taking another look. So here I am just scanning to find a second one of those glasses. I have never seen one of those peacock glasses. And a prunes canister or container catches my attention. Prunes? <laughs> I have never seen something like that. Germany. Beautiful crock. Unfortunately, the top did not match, and I did contemplate it for a while to be used maybe as a spoon holder or a utensil holder, but I say no to it. Okay, this is 222 fifth. If that would have been a full set, I would have run comps on that, kind of like a salad bowl and, you know, four individuals if they were there. This set of mugs caught my attention. Martin Myers, did that say? M Malin, Martin Malin, huh. But I don't give that a second thought. I didn't think that was good enough. Now this catches my attention. A bathroom vanity set, you know, the toothbrush holder and cup. No soap dish to be found. And I thought about this way too long, back and forth. But I do wind up taking this and putting this in my cart to run comps on. There was no marking, no branding that I found. For a second, I thought the branding might have been on the stickers, but it wasn't. But I do put it in my cart and run comps on that. Sometimes when I'm on the fence about something going back and forth, I will take them and put them in my cart and then run a comp and put them back on the shelf. I don't hold on to them too long because I never want to get a full cart with things I have to run a lot of comps on. I try to do it as quickly as possible. Bottom shelf, granny square quilt or afghan. I didn't like the colorway. Pretty much when I pick up the granny square afghans, I do look for them in what I call bohemian colors, black with bright colors. And this bag here, for a second, I thought it was soaps or perfumes, but it is incense. I 
And now we are on to the Halloween aisle. These glass globes caught my attention right away. I felt they were vintage. If there were three of the same color, again, I would have taken them without knowing what they were and done the research later. I can afford to do that at $2 a piece. But because that third one was a different color, that was my thinking anyway. I left it behind. Here, just made in China, pumpkins. I don't really decorate for fall, but um, they always catch my attention. Now we are rounding the corner and we find cats. What is a group of cats called? I don't even know, not a gaggle. I'm not quite sure, but they are all white cats. This one, Intercourse, Pennsylvania. That's an actual town in Pennsylvania. I thought that was probably the best one. This one had some unique staining on it. At first I thought it was like, you know, a two-tone cat, but I think something was spilled on the cat. So the middle cat is the one that I thought of for a while, but I didn't think it was that special. But here I'm trying to figure out what happened to this cat. Did he get in a dumpster? I wasn't quite sure. Here I'm noticing a chip on top of the Cardinal's head for this soup tureen. As you can see in my cart, I've picked up a Disney snow globe. I do not ship snow globes. So in my whole time of thrifting, I have never picked up a snow globe, but I decided to put that one in my cart and check comps on it along with this black rabbit. Now I was pretty sure he was made out of either soapstone some kind of stone. And again, I'm on the fence. This day I was on the fence for quite a few items. Probably because I'm a little bit under the weather and I don't have my full game on, but still willing to go thrifting. So as you can see, I've picked up a few things. When you weren't looking, we have a vintage tissue holder and uh, two tissue holders, I think. I will show them to you closer. Just going through the ball caps. So I had to double back because there were too many people on the aisle. This is a brass vase, I'm gonna say, made in India. Most of the brass I find is made in India. I have found a few pieces from the United States very rare. I thought this was quite unique, but I don't know who would want that, so I do leave it behind. That turned out to be a little candle inside. And ever since I sold quite a few high profit trash cans, I am always looking at trash cans. So after finishing the hard goods aisles, I did stop and run comps on the items I had put in my cart and almost all of it went back. The comps were not there for the snow globe to be high enough to warrant me having to ship a water filled snow globe. I think it would have brought like $35 and I'm not willing to have to do that much work uh, because they wanted 15 for it. So now I'm in the men's clothing that is one great thing about selling what I sell, which is pretty much anything. If I get to a thrift store and there aren't any good hard goods, I can go to clothing. This is Adam Levine. And the reason I'm showing this sweater is to show you guys this pattern. It is a Southwestern Aztec pattern. If the brand is a mall brand or better, I usually pick those up, but Adam Levine does not bring any kind of money to speak of. Well, at least for me. The shirt I have in my cart, we will take a better look at. It is a vintage Western shirt. But here I'm just looking through t-shirts. I'm looking for any kind of athletic wear, vintage t-shirts, and I'm just using my eye to hand pick. Under Armour, I would have picked this up, but not at $7. This shirt would probably bring, I don't know, 20 to 22. I do sell quite a few jerseys. Roger sells a ton of jerseys. This one, you can see the letters are pretty worn. There's quite a bit of damage. 
Here I'm pulling a cycle shirt. I wanted to show this to you guys because I do well with these shirts. You can tell a cycle shirt by the elastic waist and the pockets in the back. I always look for the good graphics. This graphic is very good, but it had quite a few pulls on it. And as I was looking at clothing, there was an employee putting out a few more items. I went over to see this home coat trio. How cute are they? Little elves. Again, not a high dollar return, so I leave them sadly behind. The sleeves on this shirt caught my attention. A crushed velvet or a velveteen, I should say. Women's shirt, Zach and Rachel. Once in a while, I'll pick up Zach and Rachel, not too often, but I did want to show you the sleeves on this top. $7, again, too high. I might have bought this if it was $3.50 or lower. The racks are so packed in this store, it makes looking through quite cumbersome. Stay. <laughs> Could not get those shoes to stay. So one more scan of the clothing and the shoes, and I am on to artwork. I am looking for hand-done originals. I feel the surface to see if I can feel the paint. Now that does not always mean it's original. There are machines that do put texture onto canvas. So a computer will print the print and then extra paint is applied. Quite a few country scenes. And for me to pick up something this size, it has to be spectacular and really noteworthy. I was just tapping the glass to see if it was glass or a piece of acrylic. Okay guys, so this is my one big purchase. Okay, so I am back home and I just wanted to show you the label again on this shirt. Mine and Bill's Outfitters, definitely vintage. And it has an embroidered flame pattern, which is very popular in the Western equestrian community people that go to rodeos, and people that just like Western clothing. I thought the graphic on this was really good, and that's what drew my eye to it. Here is the tag. Now the tag is quite worn, even though it's still attached. I feel this shirt would have been better if it had pearl snap buttons, but it doesn't. It just has a regular button. It's kind of like a, uh, a clear button, which is a little bit nicer than the typical black. And I expect to probably get about $30 for this. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours.